Okay, thanks for joining. So, um, uh, this, uh, yeah, let's start with the introduction. I'm Dimitri Desmet. It's and I'm Yves Falza. We are both from NSX, which is the network and security piece within uh, VMware. And so today we'll talk about the Neutron, so the network and security piece of uh, OpenStack. Uh, just before starting, I just want to know in the audience who is considering himself more on the network and security side? Not so many people. So you're on, I'm not sure you're in the right, uh, <laughs> the right session. And who believes Neutron is pretty cool and he's a piece of cake and simple and all good? <laughs> Two guys. Okay, because me, when I think of OpenStack and Neutron, I'm, I picture myself uh, more like this. And uh, actually, I'm not the only one, because if you look at the, yeah, here we go, the clicker doesn't work. Uh, if we look at the um, survey in OpenStack, the one of, uh, from 2016, Neutron with, um, uh, out of all the, um, out of all the projects, Neutron with Thelometer was considered the most challenging project and uh, very complex to use. And if you look at the latest one that just released a week ago, I did not vote, so my vote is not in, in this one, but still the same. Neutron is considered as pretty hard and needs to be reworked and make it simpler. So, it's not, so I feel not that dumb. I'm not the only one feeling that's a complex project to make it up and alive and, and do what you want to do. Uh, and there are reasons for that. That's what I'll explain in the next uh, five minutes. It's, if you look at, uh, those comes from OpenStack. I didn't make, made uh, the, what you're looking at now myself. If you look at Neutron, the reference architecture, just to do L2, you cannot do something more simple. Just to do L2, if you do L2 in a Visio, you just draw a line and plug VMs on it, that's it, pretty simple. If you do physical world, you just create a VLAN and plug physical servers on it. Pretty, pretty simple. You've done that all your life, or your dad did that all, all his life. In Neutron, that's what it is. Don't tell me that's simple to you. And so it's a bunch of Linux bridges. It's a bunch of open vSwitch. And you try to, or oh, OpenStack does it for you, plug everything to pretty much uh, where it should be. But if something bad happens, yeah, troubleshoot that. So some people are good at this. Uh, some are gurus and understand that diagram. I, I gave up a long time ago to try to understand it. Uh, but even if you understand that piece, I just said piece, not, yeah, uh, that piece, the, um, you still have challenges on performance and troubleshooting because you have so many ops within your KVM you love, then it will, it will slow down the whole process. And troubleshooting that when OpenStack doesn't do what it should do or KVM doesn't do what it should do, then, yeah, good luck. Uh, so that's only L2. Now if you do L3, just basic routing, that's in your Visio you love what it is. Now that's in OpenStack. I, won't, I want to save time, so I won't go through uh, how it works. Uh, but that's this complex stuff that is done by OpenStack or Neutron. And I'm not showing distributed L3. I'm not showing, showing uh, security group, so DFW. I'm not showing load balancing. I'm not showing QoS. Just with basic L2, basic L3, it's already a nightmare. Oh, sorry, I should not say nightmare, but for me, it's already a nightmare. Maybe some of you, you didn't raise your hand, so I guess you understand that piece. Uh, but for the people who don't understand that piece or don't want to understand that piece, then, uh, yeah, that's why people use something else for Neutron, and they use a vendor. Uh, it's to get simpler implementation. Simpler implementation. That's what was in the survey. Uh, to get also support when some, some shit happens, you want to be able to call someone to help you. Uh, to get better performance, because with all the hubs we talked about before, I mean, that, that kills the throughput you may have, uh, you can have out of your, your hypervisor. Troubleshooting, I mean, troubleshooting, as I said before, and I'll show you a couple of things later, is just a nightmare. So for all of, all of that, and also scalability, uh, um, scale, uh, to support many VMs, many hypervisors, and high availability, I put that in italic, because some people may claim, and they're right, 
uh, you can do with the reference architecture Neutron in a fully scalable, um, highly available way, but it adds even more complexity to the, uh, to the implementation. So you want something just simple that works and with high performance, easy to troubleshoot and with support. And so for that, you go with a vendor. And NSX is one of them. Uh, now, why do I believe NSX is a great uh, plugin for Neutron? That's uh, what I'm explaining to you in the next uh, two minutes. So, first of all, NSX comes from a vendor. So, okay, you have to pay for it, but what do you get out of this? You, each release coming out of VMware NSX has to go through tens of thousands of tests, um, functional tests, and also scale and longevity longevity test. So at the end of the day, you have some, some uh, reinsurance that uh, it should work at your place as well. Uh, high availability, which is very complex to do in OpenStack, Neutron, then you have it out outside of the box. You don't have to configure anything. It's just by design. Uh, it also gives you flexibility, which is a big motto of OpenStack, choice. Uh, it's not because you use VMware NSX, you must use ESX for the compute. You can use ESX, you can use KVM, Red Hat, Ubuntu, we love them all. Um, and you have the same feature set for network and security services. Whatever, if you use KVM or, or ESX behind for your compute, um, then uh, you can use the services NSX offer. In terms of services you offer, lots of people, even if OpenStack, Neutron supports a bunch of stuff like QoS, distributed router, uh, load balancing, many, many, many people don't use those because, yeah, complexity, bugs, interoper interoperability between one and another. What do you have outside of NSX? You have L2, obviously, overlays, distributed routing, so the DVR, if I use the OpenStack words. You have NAT and no NAT. If you're in the enterprise, yeah, NAT sucks. Lots of people don't want floating IPs. Uh, you don't have to with NSX. You can do uh, no NAT and it works great. I'll show you in a minute how we do that. Uh, you have L2 connectivity in the same subnet between VMs and physical servers. You have the security groups with stateful firewall. And you can have also load balancing. And all that driven from OpenStack. You don't talk to NSX. You talk to OpenStack with the front end OpenStack API you love, doing click, click, click in Horizon, or doing your heat template, or whatever you use. And this, because of the plugin NSX configured in Neutron, will translate that to NSX, and NSX will, will do that beautiful uh, network topology behind the scene. So all that exists uh, when, you have, um, when, you have, when you use NSX behind, <laughs> behind Neutron. Now, uh, simple integration into your physical world. We have something pretty unique uh, that helps you to not use floating IPs, so not use uh, NAT. What we do when you deploy NSX um, in an OpenStack environment, you pre-deploy, outside of OpenStack, you pre-deploy a logical router that's what you have at the top, and you link that to your physical routers. So the NSX top tier router is BGP um, uh, has a BGP adjacency with your physical routers and will advertise all the subnets you have in OpenStack. On day zero, obviously, it advertises nothing. But then when tenants start deploying from OpenStack stuff, like uh, those two networks and uh, this logical router, then automatically uh, NSX plugin will plug the tenant router to the top tier NSX router. And so now the top tier router advertise subnet A and subnet B. So you don't need floating IPs. You can do no NAT and automatically your physical world will learn those subnets A and B without touching anything on the physical world or OpenStack or NSX. And if you want to use NAT, then it will advertise only the NAT in that case. The plugin is smart enough to know, oh, the tenant green is configuring its router with uh, SNAT, so I will only advertise the floating IP, and so on and so forth. All the stuff, I dip, the topologies we support will be rightly advertised in the physical world, so much simpler. Uh, I'll finish with the performance, and I'll go quick because we want to spend some time on Kubernetes, which is a new 
cool stuff everybody talks about, and we do also some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, performance on the, on the left of the screen, you see what is the reference architecture, that beautiful um, bunch of boxes and wires. And what we do inside your KVM with the NSX plugin, we simply control the OpenV switch and we gave up on using all those, li those Linux bridges and that gives you much, much higher performance because you don't have those internal hubs. We can saturate a 210 gig NIC out of each uh, KVM you have you love. And obviously, if you love also ESX, we do it on ESX. I say KVM because, yeah, it's OpenStack here today. At VMworld, I don't use that word too much. But we support both and with the same scale. Uh, in the diagram on the left, I'm not showing you the reference architecture with um, uh, security groups, but on the right, I'm showing it to you, and it's not using Linux bridges and things like that. It's just plugging OVS uh, FWD with contract for stateful firewall on the OVS vSwitch, on the open vSwitch, and, uh, and that's it. So it doesn't kill the, it doesn't drop the performance to add security. You still can saturate your 20 gig, your 210 gig NICs. Uh, so that's the performance outside your hypervisor. Now for routing, we support distributed routing. Let's go through the animation quick. But what that means is in the logical view, you have the VM blue that will go to its default gateway logical router that will go to the VM yellow, yellow, green, whatever. Uh, so that's the logical view. But the physical view inside your physical fabric it's actually going from hypervisor to hypervisor because the router is distributed in all the KVMs. And if you have the blue and the green on the same hypervisor, it actually doesn't leave the hypervisor. It's just internal, even if you have routing. So we support that. Uh, for the north south, when you need to go from a VM to the outside world or from the outside world to, to your VM. Uh, so on the left, that's, let's go through the animation. On the left, you have uh, the traffic, as you, can, as you can imagine, from your VM going to the logical router to the physical VLAN and the external world. On the right, that the physical path. So what you see is, actually, let's use some animation. The first VM, blue, will go to its uh, default gateway and to the outside world using what we call an edge node that will be your top router going to the physical world. Each edge node, it's not a VM, uh, each edge node uh, supports DPDK, whatever, so it can push up to 80 gig of traffic, and they are actually in a cluster mode, so if you have another VM with obviously another MAC address, uh, it will be hashed and may end up on another edge node, so now you don't have 80 gig north house traffic, but you have 80 gig per edge node, and we support a cluster of uh, eight. Uh, so really uh, high, high throughput also for the north-south traffic. Uh, troubleshooting, I'll show you that in the demo, but yeah, if you, if you go with the uh, reference architecture and your VM1 cannot talk to the VM2, I'm sure, I mean, if you're in the neutron space, uh, you've done those beautiful commands, OVS, DP Kotal, OVS, VC Kotal, VS Kotal, and all those dump um, options. And then you do your magic grep to find the real flow to see what is the action, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and five days later, yeah, you figure it out. And OK, it's working again. Um, so if you, oh, no, if you have a tattoo, and, um, and then, yeah, it's maybe only in one hour. But still, it's painful. Um, so what we do with NSX, because NSX is your SDN that controls the OVS, you can do it from a nice UI, click, 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 and you can see uh, you can see the path in the logical world. So when VM1, in this example, going from uh, your KVM you love, uh, wants to talk to the VM2 on the ESX you should love, uh, because we support KVM and ESX even in a mixed environment, uh, it goes through the logical switch, the logical router, to the logical switch, and back uh, to the second hypervisor. So that's the logical view. And the, on the right side, you see each step done by uh, the NSX. The DFW, the switch, the routing. 
And those are real, really, really done. So I'll show you that in a, in a demo that will be simpler. Uh, okay, five more minutes. So just on time for the demo. We'll do Q&A Q &A session at the end. Uh, so my demo is pretty much uh, the typical um, uh, environment you have at customers. So you have the top router I explained before, which is uh, BGP paired with your physical router in my lab. And at, at the beginning, I have nothing, and that's what I have in my lab. I have nothing, so my physical router knows nothing. And then uh, I won't do this one to save time. I'll just do the second one, so no NAT which is popular in the enterprise. So I'll deploy a VM on a logical switch, another VM on a logical switch, a logical router, and plug to the external world with the logical router with no SNET. And you will see that uh, the physical router will learn those two subnets, okay? If you want to see SNET, I can do it also for you if you want at the end. And actually, uh, oh yeah, this, I'll, I'll do it quick, but uh, yeah, let's say uh, uh, the tenant is calling you because it's VM blue cannot do MySQL to the VM green, and I'll show you how to um, quickly troubleshoot without doing uh, 20 line of commands with, uh, with uh, five grep uh, in it. So that's actually uh, what I've done so far, a very similar session I did six months ago in Barcelona. Barcelona. You have uh, the link, the YouTube, uh, video of this, uh, it was using Mirantis, just to show you that, uh, yeah, VMware has a great OpenStack distro called VIO, uh, but actually NSX works great with that one, that OpenStack distro, but works with any distro. If you don't want VIO for whatever reason, because you don't, um, you want to use some, somebody else for good or bad reasons, uh, OpenStack distro, or you, you do it yourself, you're a real man. Um, then it, it works on anything as long as it's OpenStack. So last time I showed you Mirantis. This time I show you uh, Red Hat OpenStack 10, which is Newton. Uh, but that, roughly the demo is the same. So let's go there. Ding, 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 ding. So uh, I guess I'm still logged in. Yeah, so I'm logged at, I'm, no, I'm not. User one, VMware one bang. So that's Red Hat OpenStack 10, this one. Uh, so Newton. I'm logged in as user one, and I will deploy what I showed you. And this is this. So it's, I do it via heat because I don't want to do 200 click, click, click. So it's the same heat you could do even with, if you don't have an SX. What do I do in this heat template? I, uh, I create a network. I create a subnet. I create a second network, I create a second subnet, I create a router with no NAT. I create, I plug my router to the two subnets. I create my security group to accept this for my web VM and that MySQL for my DB VM. And uh, I create the neutron port and the two VMs. Okay, so it's the heat you, you would do without NSX, nothing to do with NSX in this. Okay, and let's do that quick. Uh, launch. Here we go. Here we go. Next. Demo one, whatever password. Oh, just before doing this, I just want to, here we go, I lost it. I go on my physical router. It's a Vieta, so you can see it's, a, it's really physical. Uh, IP route BGP, so that's the physical router on the, uh, in the physical world. And it doesn't learn anything via BGP, because in my OpenStack, I ha it's the first tenant, and yeah, nothing is in OpenStack yet. So let's deploy that one. And, uh, and here we go, so it's deploying my common horizon. It's deploying, it's not finished, but we can see already my two switches, uh, my logical router. If I refresh, because I have only one VM now, if I refresh, here we go. My two VMs, one on each logical switch, and if we look at the VMs, they are deploying, or maybe already done. Yeah, one is done, one is not done, but okay, almost there. And now if I look, 
those subnets are learned by my physical world and I can access my VMs with no NAT, no floating IPs, thanks to the trick I, I explained before. So pretty neat. Now, if you, have, if you haven't seen NSX yet, let's look at what happened. So in OpenStack, it's the default stuff you've been doing for years. So your VMs, your network are here with uh, those very friendly uh, UUIDs. Like that's my name and that's the friendly UUID. So in NSX, those switches are, if I can see switch, here we go. Those switches are here. And what we do to make your life OpenStack uh, cloud admin, uh, your life easier, we have the name done by, created by the tenant, plus the UUID in OpenStack, so it's easier to find. And you have a bunch of tags who tells you who created and the UUID, and same thing for the router. Here we go. So that's very friendly to find things in OpenStack when you have hundreds or thousands of things. And you have this beautiful filter, or search, sorry. If you want to know everything from tenant one, you just go here. And here you can see all the logical switch ports, the DNS, DHCP created by OpenStack, the, um, the routers, the VMs, everything. So that may, even if you have a large OpenStack, you can find stuff easily. And the last thing I have, minus one minute. Uh, mm -hmm. When VM1 cannot talk to VM2, somebody calls you, and instead of asking him, oh, okay, give me uh, SSH uh, access and I'll do some, uh, some tests, or you go to the KVM and you do those beautiful um, uh, OVS cuttle uh, commands, you can simply go here and you select the VM1, VM2, and uh, you can see behind the scene, the, uh, oh, you can see their real IP address and, and, uh, and Mac, and you can do, oops, you can do a ping, that's what I'll do, or some, but something else. And what this does is it's really sending, tra so this NSX uh, manager will talk to the KVM and say, please, in oh, please, I'm not sure, but we'll say uh, forward that packet. Uh, so if you sniff, you will really see that packet. With the flag, it's a test packet, and it will go through all those steps. The DFW, the switching, the routing, up to the far end, uh, hypervisor, and when it has to send it to the VM because there is this flag, it won't send it. But the packet really goes through. And if I do something, and I'm done there, uh, which is not accepted because of firewall reasons, uh, here we go, and let's say I want to do uh, SSH, which is not in the policy security groups I accepted, then uh, so it takes time because it really goes to each element and, and, and go through and get the, the result. And it tells you, oh, it's dropped at the very beginning because of the firewall rule and the ID of the firewall rule. Or if it was not working because KVM1 cannot talk to KVM2, the communication in the data plane is broken, you would see the traffic go inside, but then it has to go to the other KVM, drop because, yeah, it cannot talk to, okay? So, make, so it makes your life much, much easier. No question? Anyway, it's at the end. Okay. Switch to the other laptop, please. Thank you. Welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's talk a bit about Kubernetes and what late. we are doing there. So before I go into some of the details on how, what we have built, let's go through some of the challenges that we have. Um, first of all, I, I don't really see too many differences between the OpenStack challenges and the container challenges, right? So you are the right audience to talk about it, to understand it. Uh, if you look at like the reference implementation, you have a lot of ports everywhere and you don't have a central point of management on how to troubleshoot individual ports. You don't see counters uh, on a central place, etc. That's the same for most implementations out there for containers. You have thousands and thousands of containers with a, a lot of ports, but where do you see them? Where do you see what traffic counters uh, are there? Or how do you redirect traffic? How do you troubleshoot? So that's one thing that we are want to address. Every container or pod in Kubernetes speech uh, will have or has a dedicated interface on NSX that we can see in the central management system just 
as with OpenStack instances or vSphere VMs. Um, some plugins today in Kubernetes don't support yet network policy, and network policy itself is also uh, in a beta state right now. So in a lot of cases, today's Kubernetes clusters are all open. So every pod, every container can talk to, it, to all the others, no matter uh, if you are in different tenants or not, right? This is addressed by the Kubernetes community. There is a new project called Network Policy that addresses this. But again, not every plugin supports it. And what we will add on top of the support for network policy is also admin rules, where you can predefine specific sets of rules that apply for the whole cluster. No matter what the tenant does, you don't allow in specific ports. You don't allow in from a uh, traffic from a specific IP so that you can also black hole the bad guys. And then, of course, we want to automate everything, right? We just saw with, with, uh, with heat, we want to make sure that if you deploy a Kubernetes cluster, if you deploy something in Kubernetes, if your user, which is a developer, deploys something in Kubernetes, he doesn't have to ask for something first. He doesn't have to call the network guy and say, can I have some VLANs first, please? Right? It just happens automatically for the user. He doesn't feel that there is a network implementation doing magic in the background. So what are we building? We are building, first of all, a different topology than what most um, plugins do or most uh, network implementations for Kubernetes do today. We are building a topology per namespace. In Kubernetes, the namespace is a tenancy construct. And what we decided to do is to uh, build a topology per namespace. So we, in this example, we have the namespace foo and the namespace bar, and we will create separate objects in NSX logical routers, logical switches, to support the pods in that namespace. So IP addressing will also be done per namespace, and a pod in namespace foo has a different set of IP addresses than a pod in namespace bar. And that also addresses the use case we saw in Dimitri's uh, example, where we have a no-nat and a netted environment. And we will make that possible with Kubernetes too. When we create the namespace in Kubernetes, we will be able to define that it should be a netted or a no-netted namespace. And then in the no-netted case, you just have direct routing from the logical switch to the uh, first hop router, the tier one routers, to the tier zero router, to the uh, physical network. So what we just saw in the OpenStack demo is equally applicable here. Now since all the um, pods will have their own interface into NSX, uh, we also have counters. We can redirect traffic. We can, we can send traffic with a remote uh, span uh, monitoring session to a centralized system. We count flows, uh, et cetera. We, the, the, the traceful tool that we just saw in the, in the OpenStack demo will work for containers too. Uh, one additional set of detail, we are also implementing an IPAM in NSX for the container use case. So when a new namespace is created, we are um, we are addressing it based out of IP blocks, as you will see in the demo also, that are administered in NSX. Okay, the central component that we are building is the NSX container plugin. And it's a piece of software that we will give you as a uh, container image that you can run in your Kubernetes cluster as a pod also. And it interfaces between the Kubernetes API and NSX, and it will create those objects in NSX when it sees them being created in Kubernetes. What is nice about Kubernetes is that you can watch for things. You can watch for new namespaces to be created. You can watch for new uh, parts to be created, and then, and then you react upon it. You create your topology if you detect a new namespace, and that's what we do here. Now, this will not be just limited to, um, to Kubernetes. We're also actively building an integration with Cloud Foundry right now. And we are also looking into Docker Lib Network, which is part of Docker Data Center, uh, and into Mesos. However, right now, the priority is on Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. So some of you um, might already have heard of container network interface of CNI. And in the previous slide, you didn't see CNI, right? We, we, you saw that we are directly talking to the Kubernetes API to create objects. And that's true. But still, we are also using CNI, which is an interface spec on the node that runs the containers to talk to the network implementation. We are also using that for a specific case, as you will see in the next slide. <laughs> um, 
Now, CNI is supported by all those, of, of those uh, frameworks that we just saw, uh, said. Uh, just uh, Docker itself decided to do, uh, to do a different uh, spec, but we're also working with Docker to support this one. So where CNI is used is on the node itself. And here we are uh, working on the assumption that the node is a VM or an instance in OpenStack. And in this case, what might happen if you use one of the normal plugins or the usually used plugins of Kubernetes is that you get double encapsulation. You have your underlying OpenStack uh, IS uh, network solution, which gives you VXLAN overlays. And on top of it, you might run, again, VXLAN overlays. How do we make sure that doesn't happen? Basically, we're using a local VLAN ID from the node down to the hypervisor to signal the individual port. And for those guys that, see, that saw the career project, that's actually, actually the same. They are using the same, the same method to do that, right? Uh, and we are also supporting, by the way, the career project, as you will see in the later slide. So we are doing the same thing. So every time a pod is created, the node itself, there is a service of Kubernetes running here called Kubelet, will, will call our CNI plugin. The CNI plugin will build this pipe up, will assign a local VLAN ID, and here's the virtual port we get on the hypervisor. And I'm running really fast so that I can show you the demo. So, uh, here are my Kubernetes nodes. I have a master and two uh, nodes. And those are um, deployed using OpenStack, uh, and specifically here, VIO. Uh, that would also have worked in Dimitri's demo with a KVM-based uh, environment with Red Hat, Mirantis, or SUSE, one of our partners. And you see each of those um, uh, VMs, those nodes, and the master, has an interface to the management network and the pod network. And the management network is where they communicate with, with each other. So the node one will talk over the management network to the Kubernetes master. But if we create pods, we will use the pod network to send traffic. And actually, the IP address that you see here, you can pretty much ignore because they are fake. This is something uh, I'm, I'm working around right now. We don't really need those IP addresses, but the way I de de deploy it today with Terraform forces me to add an IP address there. So usually those interfaces would not need an IP address because all the, uh, the networks for Kubernetes are created in NSXT alongside the OpenStack environment, right? And so what you see here is the management network and the pod network that we just saw in OpenStack, and they were created by, by Terraform. Okay, now you see those two uh, other, or the three other networks here, and those are already our uh, pre-created uh, logical networks for Kubernetes. So if I look at Kubernetes, and I look at my namespaces, I already have three predefined namespaces that come with Kubernetes 1.6, which is the default namespace, kube system, and, and, and kube public. And those are automatically created also here uh, if uh, in, in uh, NSX, as soon as the NSX container plugin starts, it sees those namespaces in Kubernetes and creates a topology for it, right? If I create additional namespaces, and here we'll call them NSX open and NSX secure, and I refresh here, then they will pop up here. So here we have our NSX open, and we have one port in it right now. This one port that we have in it right now is the logical port for the logical router, right? So obviously, we also created logical routers, NSX open, NSX secure here. If I look at the logical router configuration, I see that there was an IP address assigned to the router port. This is the default gateway the, the, the containers or the pods that Kubernetes are using. Where did that IP address come from? As I said, it comes from the IPAM in NSX, so here you can see we have a Kubernetes IP block, which has a specific CIDR, and we carve out a subnet out of um, that block for Kubernetes, or for those namespaces that we just created. And by the way, those are slash 27, so at some point you will run out of IP addresses if we deploy too many parts. But that's not an issue. We'll just create another logical switch with another subnet, and another logical switch with another subnet. So it grows with the amount of parts we have, and it shrinks when those parts disappear. Okay, 
next thing we'll do is we'll look at the, um, the stuff that we will deploy now. And this will be a replication controller which starts four replicas of a part that runs this container in it, which is a web server running an NSX demo. Then we will create a service. A Kubernetes service is an east-west load balancer in a way to uh, do service discovery in, in Kubernetes. So my service will be visible inside of the cluster as the NSX demo service. And then we'll create an ingress, with it, which is an ingress load balancer that will uh, look for the URL or the host name that I'm using. It will send it to the right pods, which is my web front end. Now, one thing before I create it that I want to point out is this labels here. Here, the only label we have is app NSX demo. And that is significant because when we create those pods, and we go to the NSX open, that's already this one, you will see that we will create these logical ports. And if I look at the logical port created for that pod, for that container pod, you see we assigned a specific IP address to it, but we also copied down all the tags that were uh, present as labels into uh, the uh, NSX logical port. And we use that for the firewall rules, as you will see later in the demo. Now, importantly here, yes, we have counters. Uh, I could do my spend session, my port mirroring. Uh, I can export flow records, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And one last thing here on that view. Let's refresh that so that my ports are up. You can also see here that each of those uh, container sub-interfaces has a VLAN ID that identifies it on the node. So it has a parent interface, which is the node, uh, and which is node 2 in this case. And then it has this VLAN tag that, that makes it unique uh, on, on, the, on the local significant node. OK. Now, yeah, I don't need to watch that. That's already created. Now, I will create another one. And the only difference between those two is that I have an additional label here, which is sec group web tier. OK? So let's create that. Now, else it's completely the same spec. So refresh. We see now the NSX Secure has two interfaces. Let's go into it. And here, obviously, we copied the label. And now we have sec group web tier down here. How is that used? We have a group here. And by the way, those are the groups that were created by Neutron as security groups for the firewalling. But also, we have here a predefined one, which is Kubernetes web tier. And here, I defined that whatever has the scope, set group, and the value of web tier is a member of that group. So this is a predefined admin rule, which matches all the logical ports that belong to this NSX secure that uses these labels. Right? And that I can now use in my firewall. And here I have a simple rule, say, drop web to web traffic because I don't expect web servers to talk to each other. Right? So I will tra drop all the traffic in the NSX secure deployment from pods to pods. So let's look at the ingresses. I don't need to watch that. Let's look at the ingresses. The first one is listening to an URL called NSX open. And the other one is listening to the URL NSX secure. So let's go to the NSX open one first. And here's our NSX demo. And as I'm a bad guy, I created a little, oop, yeah, that's when you're on a Mac and try to do a control copy on a PC. Um, I have a little port scan app, because I'm an SD guy. And that will scan all the neighbors that I have on specific ports. So as you see here in the open case, it might be a bit small, but I guess you can, you can get it. Um, the port 80 is open, right? I see all my other web containers because I don't enforce any policy for NSX open. So now let's do the same with the NSX secure. Oh, I keep doing it. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Ah, what was it again? I'm I'm not as good as you. Okay. And here we go. There will be one answer of 100 or whatever the part was I'm in. Oh, 1005. Okay, that was a bad demo if I'm using the wrong. 1005. Oh, it gets it doesn't get better. 1005, you say? Yeah. Okay. I cannot see. It's too small. I think now it's good. Okay, one should react. Okay, yeah. one reacts, which is the container I'm running the support scan on. The other one are closed. Okay, and that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, where's my presentation? Okay. So some FAQ um, that you might have um, before we go into the actual questions. So why, why are we not using the Neutron API in this integration? Basically, this integration that we are using right now uh, is also meant to work in a pure vSphere environment that does, it doesn't have any IS. It's meant to work in Photon platform. It's meant to work in other environments in public cloud that doesn't have OpenStack with it. So that's why we are doing this integration this way. However, if you want to use Korea, we are happily supporting that. Uh, Korea has the VLAN uh, aware VM uh, feature uh, that it needs to do this, this piping, let's say, between the containers and, and, and the hypervisor, and that is fully supported in NSXT. Uh, we, are use, we are supporting the cloud provider uh, to use Elbas. However, uh, you, as you saw, we are um, mostly looking to use Ingress right now as, as our main solution. And yes, we will support network policy from day one. Here we go. Okay, so I don't know. Uh, first of all, uh, those were two live demos. So I think uh, he deserves, and I too, a round of applause. <laughs> and then we open to questions. <laughs> okay, any question? It was super clear? Ready? Yeah. If you can go to the mic. Yeah. yeah protocol that you had between yeah. uh, the edge and the physical yeah. BGP, can yeah. that be swapped out for OSPF? No, the only um, dynamic routing protocol we support today is BGP. Okay, thank you. Okay, if that's something you are looking at, we are looking at enhancing that, but so far customers were fine with BGP. Okay, yeah, I'm not the network guy, but okay. I know we use yeah. OSPF, so I just thought I'd ask. Okay. You may have said this, but I may have missed it. Uh, what w are you using overlay networking for all the container cases, or yes. is there a non-overlay case? Yes, so if the NCP creates this topology, what it actually creates is overlay networks from hypervisor to hypervisor. But from the node VM itself, from the container down to the hypervisor, it's a local VLAN tag that gets popped out as soon so as it's- So that's the yeah. VLAN aware VM yes. requirement. And um, can you explain a little bit more about the individual logical topology per namespace? Yeah, so the reason we are doing that is to be, have the flexibility to also decide between, here's a namespace where we want to use NATed IP addresses, and here's one where we don't want to use NATed IP addresses. Because we have customers that say, okay, for most of the test dev use cases, I just, I just want to have capacity where I don't care about if it's NATed or not. But for my few production use cases, I want to have direct routing to my backend database. I want to see the real IP address of the pod down uh, in logs, et cetera. Um, and so the topology per namespace gives, that, uh, gives us that flexibility. And honestly, it's also easier to grasp from a normal networking mindset um, uh, point of view. So when you say separate topology, is just independent set of VLA, VXLAN tunnels. That's, yeah, yeah, that's right, right. It's not, it's, it's not two separate uh, physical network topologies, no. Yeah, not even yeah. physical, but when you say logically separate topologies, it's essentially X, these ABC tunnels and XYZ yeah. tunnels. Mm -hmm. So the, the, if you compare it to something else, then you would compare it to uh, an installation where all the IP addresses on all the nodes are spread all over the place, and the only tenancy is using firewalling and, poli and network policy, and, and that's the difference between topology per, per namespace. Okay. We're uh, kicked out? Yeah, we're kicked out, but so uh, we stay here, so if you have other questions, no, uh, go, yeah, go to the stage, and that's, uh, that's just fine. I think for the recording, they want to keep it at 40 minutes. So thank for your time, and, uh, and enjoy Neutron. <laughs>